let's get to chapter three, which is the estrogen fix, choosing the right hormone therapy for you. That's a good one, Dr. Mesh. How do we go about choosing the right hormone therapy for ourselves? It's always good to work with somebody who knows what the choices are because there's a lot of estrogens out there. But as I began uh, speaking about in the initial comments, women decide to take estrogen and brush strokes based on whether or not they have a uterus or they don't, which estrogen is the right one. And so women who have a uterus, and this is very important, require both estrogen plus some form of progesterone. And what that does is it protects the uterine lining from developing precancerous changes. And if you take both, you don't have to worry about that. So you can't take estrogen only if you have a uterus. You can take estrogen, progesterone, it's all safe, it's all good. Then if you don't have a uterus, you've had a hysterectomy, you only need estrogen. Then comes many other choices because estrogen comes as pills, estrogen comes as patches, estrogen comes as gels, estrogen comes as sprays, estrogen comes as pellets under the skin, in rings that go in the vagina, in creams that go on the skin and in the, or in the vagina. So there's all these ways to take it. In general, if women take lower dosages, it's always the safest, kind of start the lowest. And if women uh, use topical estrogens, meaning on the skin, then it tends to lower the risk of any blood clots or side effects or complications. But every woman is individualized based on her medical past, based on her personal preferences, and based on her uh, beliefs or thoughts about what would work best for her lifestyle. Like maybe she takes a pill because every night it's by the sink and she knows to take it. So some women who have been taking, say, birth control pills forever, it's just normal to take a pill. Mm -hmm. but other people don't want a pill. Do you want a period or you don't want to have a period? Because you can take hormone therapy so you never have a period or so that you have a cycling of a period every month or however it's determined you want to have it. So all of these things go into a discussion, go into the decision hat, you shake it up, and then you choose the one that works best for you. You know, I'm going to share my own experience at this point. So as some of you who've been either uh, familiar with my work or read some of my articles know that I was very sick, then I had menopause and had to experience it all sort of at the same time. And of course, one of the things that I heard over and over again was how birth control pills really negatively impacted the gut. In fact, I had one uh, integrative doctor say to me, I cannot heal you if you don't stop taking the pill. And at that point, I had been uh, put on the pill by a doctor about six, seven years ago because um, I was starting to have erratic periods, probably because I was on in perimenopause. I had ovarian cysts that had burst and I had all kinds of wonderful, painful drama. With that said, uh, Dr. Mesh, you know, I then did a ton more research to find out if that was true, that if being on the pill could impact the gut negatively, and there is some research to that effect. And so I switched out of ingesting things that would impact my gut and of course the liver and um, looked at applications that were more topical in nature and specifically that were perhaps just, you know, vaginal insertions as an example. Could you share just a little bit more around what is your uh, research share in terms of pill versus lotions and potions and patches? Sure. Um, a couple of things about this. Um, again, some of it has to do with preference, but when we talk about what's the medical input to it, I will give you the mirror image to what you were talking about in terms of estrogen and the gut. And that is that not only does taking the pill potentially affect the gut, and don't forget the birth control pill is a much higher dose than most of the hormones that women take in menopause. It's a higher dose and those are more synthetic and they have a totally different chemical structure than what is often taken for menopause. So, so let me begin with that. The second thing is, is that, but your gut also, the bacteria in your intestines also affects what happens to those hormones. Yes. In other words, what's really amazing is that if you have kind of a, a intestinal tract bacteria 
that aren't healthy. You've been eating a lot of fast foods, a lot of sugars, a lot of white flour, a lot of things that you may have some allergic potential to. Maybe it's corn, maybe it's wheat, maybe it's milk, maybe it's soy, whatever it is that made you allergic that you may have a mild allergy to. That changes the bacterial composition, just like in your swimming pool, when the, you see the algae and it gets too alkaline and things change and you have all of a sudden a pool that's got the green stuff in it. Yes. So what happens is when estrogen comes into the intestinal tract, it's not metabolized the same way. And so it impacts the levels of hormones that your body is exposed to. You take the same dose, but what comes through your intestinal tract, particularly if it's oral estrogen, is going to be a completely different dose, I mean a different you know, amount of metabolized estrogen than if you had a healthy bacterial flora. You would have a much better digestion because the bacteria, in which there are about three pounds of bacteria, there's, there's about 10 times the amount of DNA in, in living organisms in there uh, intestinal tract than there is in all the cells of your body. So those cells are not are, are actively digesting the, the foods and the pills that we take. And so the healthier your intestinal tract in the beginning, the better. Having said that, when you ingest the pill in general, it goes through your esophagus into your stomach and then it goes into what's called the enterohepatic circulation. So what happens is it's that it goes into your liver and the liver then is metabolizing it and responding to the estrogen. So all of a sudden you've got this huge concentration of, of estrogen in your liver. That starts to create clotting factors. That starts to create high levels of cholesterol and LDL cholesterol. Does things that are that have some more negative impacts. Impact. So as a consequence of that, that's called the first pass because it's going through and it's the first time through the liver. The reason for the reason that estrogen, oral estrogen, in higher dosages have been shown to have a little bit increased risk of blood clots is because these increased clotting factors are manufactured by the liver. But if you take it through the skin or the vagina, then what happens is it bypasses the liver and you don't get that first pass effect. You don't get that increased blood clot. So I hope I'm not overstating it here, but the point I'm trying to make is, is that it's healthier in general to take the lowest dose orally or mm -hmm. to use it through the skin or vaginally. Perfect, thank you so much for clarifying that because I know for a fact when you go to gynecologists, they don't go into this much depth. So thank you for sharing that. Of course.